people here from the selfie present? Oh, I want your autograph. <laughs> so, um, I heard the party was very nice last night. Yes. Have you ever been to the Santo Domingo before? No? It's beautiful. Yeah, did you enjoy that colonial song? It's Oof. quite an spectacular. And the Tres Ojos also, we had the opportunity to go to Tres Ojos. Oh, that's a good point. Very yeah. nice. That's, that's a really good <laughs> Well, I welcome you to the Karen Morgan School, to the GIN Conference 2014, and to Santo Domingo. My name is Bielka Morales. I'm the Development Officer for Karen Morgan School. I've been here for 11 years. This is going to be my 12th year. And the Development Office is basically in charge of looking for additional funding for the school projects. Say we need to build more uh, better facilities for our program. Say we need to build new facilities for our program, we rely on the sponsors or additional support that, uh, that come from our community and outside companies too. So, um, the development office usually works with different projects. We have, for example, the naming project. It is that we invite companies and <coughs> individuals, member, members of our community, to name a room under a loved one, their company, or a person. Uh, you, that's why you're going to see, for example, our cafeteria is sponsored by a company called Propagas, and our health office is sponsored by a company called uh, ARS Epali. So we try to look for companies that relate to the room. Uh, that's one of our fundraising programs. Also, we have a pledge where parents pledge to donate. It's usually parents. They pledge to donate a certain amount of money through the years. And we also have uh, a brick project where students, families, give a little message to engrave a uh, brick and then we place it in front of the high school library. Sure. Do you want us to hold our questions to the NBLK? Oh, I'm sorry, I didn't say that before. You can raise your hand and we can discuss it. I want this to be okay. like a conversation. I'm going to present some ideas, what we do, so you can adaptate, adapt that to, to your environment and your school. But feel free to interrupt or raise your hand and we can talk, okay? Okay, can I ask that? Sure, <laughs> so by all my, means. My question is about the companies, because several of my students noticed this and we all thought it was really cool that you guys, the but Palik, I think I saw I on the, Palik, yes. you have an amazing medical center. You know, yes. we, we compared it to our own and let's just say we come up short compared to yours. Um, how do you bring these companies in and how do you make sure they kind of match your mission? You know, as like our school's a nonprofit school, like I, I'm, I'm trying to imagine how to pitch this to my administration with them being like, do you want to sell our school? Kind of thing. Sure, sure. Um, if you allow me, I want to hold that answer through the presentation. Yeah. I'm going to tell you. Mm -hmm. So we're going to see uh, five different steps that we feel is important in terms of building community and financial support. First, we're gonna talk about build your case. Engage volunteers, identify prospects, make the ask, and finally, stewardship. This final step, sometimes it's not given the proper importance that it has. But it's very important and you're gonna see why. Let's start with build your case. You need to know your project. You need to know your project from head to toe. You need to know your story. When you go out to a vendor, you need to tell your story and talk about your program, say this conference or the school, like you were talking about yourself. You need to be prepared for any single question that you may be asked. You don't want to sound like or cut a board. So you need to, to think what is, is he going to ask, how many students the school has, What's the ratio of student per classroom? Things like that, like you, why is the donor interested in things like that? Well, they might, and you better know it, because you need to know your school. Also, you need to define your goals and purpose. Once you have your goals defined, you need to break down into objectives. Which objectives are you gonna target to go to that goal, to reach that goal, sorry? And where will the money go? Every person wants to know 
where their money will finally go. They don't want their money to go on a new Porsche or a Mercedes. They want to be sure that the money is going to do something. And you need to, uh, when you talk to them, they need to feel that, that they are investing in a good project. That's very important. Now let's see, engage volunteers. The importance of, of volunteers is amazing. They open doors, they back you up, they bring to the table new and important financial support. For example, with this uh, company, Aires Epalic, amongst our board of directors was a person that was very close to the CEO of that company. And what did, why, how we use that connection? Just for one thing, to open the doors, to get us an appointment. Say, Mr. Who, you know Mr. Why, can you get us a meeting with him? And he goes, of course. It just took an email. Listen, this school wants to go to your office. They want to present a project that I think would be appealing for your company. Why don't you listen to them? And that's all he did. If the volunteer is willing to go with you to that meeting, <coughs> it's awesome. Because it's, it's not the same when you meet a group of people you don't know from a school that is asking you for money. It's easier for you to say, you know, I'll think about it. Maybe not. But if that group of people is backed up by a volunteer that happened to go to, say, golf clubs with that person, they have a personal connection. And it's harder for that person to say no to his friend. It's not going to get you a yes, but it's going to get you closer. So a volunteer in approaching donors, it's a huge difference, makes a huge difference. You need to give volunteers measurable objectives. Why do you expect from them? Why, uh, how are you expecting them to contribute to your cause, to your project? So from time to time, you can sit with them and say, and check what have you done, where are we? Are we doing okay? Do we have to change your, our path? That's very important. And it's, usually, it's very important to, to recognize their work. You need to thank them. Once you get that money, you need to feel, you need to make that volunteer feel, hey, thank you, you helped. You were part of this success. Thank you so much. And then you're gonna be having a volunteer for a long time. Also, it's proven that volunteers sometimes, volunteers sometimes make great donors themselves. They feel so involved with the uh, organization that they become donor, donors themselves. Yes, Do your name? Laura. Laura. Do these companies get something in return? Of course, we're gonna talk about that in a minute. <laughs> Good question, Laura. Okay, identify <coughs> prospect. Okay, I need to raise money. Where did I, do I go? Who do I approach? Where do I, do I start? Basically, you go, you knock the doors, uh, you go to home people you know you are sure are going to give. You also go to whom you are not so sure if they are going to, hit, to give and you show them the first list who's going to give. Then you go to people you are sure are not going to give you a penny because you may be surprised with your tactics and your the way you sell your project, you may convince them. So that basically means that you go to everybody. <laughs> but then we have to narrow that down, of course. How do we narrow that down? You need to make research. Fundraisers rely a lot on research. You need to find out if that person is into philanthropy, if they really donate to organizations, uh, NGOs, what do they do? Do they really, uh, are they donors? Are they into that? You need to contact people who relate to your program. For example, we wanted to sell the health office, as we call it. 
we sat down and said, okay, who are we going to approach? We need to approach companies that are in the medical field. We contacted, um, this company is a, I don't know how you call it, is risk management. It's like insurance risk management. We contact, uh, for example, health labs, people like Pfizer, for example, not that particular company, but labs, uh, manufacturers and all that, and, and all that. We also contacted uh, big chain pharmacy owners, like say CVS or Walgreens, big chains like that. So those are the people who approach because they might relate to that room. They want their name relate to health issues, or not issues, to health uh, environment. Wellness. Exactly. And then on our research of these companies, we found out that Aires Epalic was very much into prevention. What they were investing a lot of money on prevention, on programs and ed educational programs that help people be healthy and take care of their, their health. So that was our pitch. <laughs> Karen Morgan School is very much into having our staff and students healthy. We banned some things that we thought were unhealthy from our cafeteria. And that we presented to them. And when we went to that meeting, they said, oh, this school has the same goals that our company. So this might be a good relationship. And that's what, we used that in the wording of the solicitation letter. We used that wording. We understand that your company is following, is after the same things that our school is. And remember that we are educating leaders. And remember that our students are the ones who are going to be making the decisions in the companies. And if our students are related to keeping people healthy, then you, you, we are on the same track. And I think that's what got us the yes. I'm pretty sure that's what got us the yes. Also, you need to define the quantity of your donors. For example, you need to raise $100,000. If it's for individuals, you can say, for example, 40% uh, of that amount is going to come from four people or four companies. But for four companies, you need like eight prospects. You need to approach, approach like eight prospects. Sorry, I keep going <laughs> off, right? Yeah. <laughs> so you cannot, if you, are go, if you need four people to support you, you cannot contact four. Because some, they're going to say no. Some, they're going to say, you know what, don't even come. I'm not interested. So you need more people to get to those four. And then th that rest of the 60%, you can break that down according to your <laughs> own uh, community, say. Sure. Is that usually about the ratio, like if about half will say? No, no. Is it more or less? It depends on the amount. If it's a big amount, then you're going to have less uh, yeah, people that, yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's like if you need to find, uh, raise $1 million, you're not, you're not going to have a lot of people to give you the 40%. But it, it depends. Mm -hmm. So for that amount, it's a logical a ratio. Amount. But it depends on the amount and the length of the time that you want to raise that. So capacity and affinity. Capacity by itself is not going to get you money, nor affinity. For example, you may have a donor that has the capacity to give but do not have the affinity to your program. And you may have the person or the donor that has the affinity to your program but does not have the capacity. Where did that take us? When affinity and capacity meet, that's the perfect donor. And if, that, if the donor <coughs> has the capacity, you might as well make him have the affinity. You just have to work on that. You just have to make him involved. How? with messages, invite him to uh, a school fair, our high school prepare a science fair and 
you being the owner of a science computer company, you would be amazed of our students, what they can do. And I think our students might be so impressed of how you have uh, built your, your company. And he goes, and you're not asking him for money. You just want him to relate to your school. And then you can build the affinity. Okay, let's see donor research. This is just general information when you're research, researching for donors. What are we looking for when we research? We are looking for details about the people you are going to target. You can use Google, you can use Dogpile, Bing, Yippee, you name it. What, when you search, use search engines, you cannot go for just one search engines because search engines are made with different criteria. They might lead you to different paths. So you need to go to every single search, search engine that you can go. So you may find out uh, the gifts that that person does. Uh, you might find out uh, where he, he's working, his work experience, is he a CEO, is he a decision making. You can find out that he was in a, in a gala where they recognized him because he gave one million dollars to a school. So you say, hey, he's used to that. I want some of that. So it's interesting to using the search engine and we take them for granted. Our friend Google is great. <laughs> <coughs> Making the ask. Okay, you got the door open, you got your meeting, now you have to ask for money. We need to think why people give. And it's not about the money. It's about what the money can do. It's about what their money can do. They, people like to feel that they donate to make a difference in the world even if it's education, even if it's health, but they need to feel that they make a difference and they want to use their money to make a difference. That's why people give. And also, so basic, they give because they are asked. If you don't ask, they won't give you anything. You have to ask. And be sure and certain that what you're asking is fair. You need to be that prepared. Not like, well, can you give me $10,000, Bridget? If you can, you can give me five. No, that attitude is not good. <laughs> so you need to feel, yeah, I won $5 million. And he's gonna open his eyes and I will, okay. <laughs> and you, that's where you need to sell your story, okay? The art of listening, very important for the meeting. In a typical conversation, it is proven that people remember about 80% of what they say and 20, 30% of what they listen. So I'm not a very good listener myself. When you talk to me, I'm already thinking, okay, I know what I'm gonna answer. How many times that has happened to you? <laughs> All the time? <laughs> yeah, we tend to do that. No, we have to change that, that's good with our sisters, our friends, but when you are visiting a donor, you need to be eyes, uh, uh, eyes and ears open. You need to listen and you need to have, you need to be prepared, which are, you, are going to be your questions, okay? So how do you make that person remember about your program? Have him talk about your program. You explain everything and then you go like, so, Mr. Mr. Donor, what do you think about our project? What are the things in this project that you feel you can make a difference in? And then you have him talk about your program, and then he's going to remember that. Selecting your questions are very, very, it's very important. You have to go for open-ended question. Don't say, do, do you donate to schools? He said, no, or yes, no. Hello, mister, 
what kind of organizations do you usually donate? And then he's gonna talk. You need to use questions that have him or her talk. That's very important. Never, never ask a question where the answer is going to be yes or no, because that's gonna make your job harder. And when you make that approach, it's important that the person knows why you are going there, how long the meeting you expect is going to last, that give them kind of control and security, that you're not gonna take the whole morning or <coughs> one hour or however. So it's important that the donor know, knows, sorry, how long that meeting is expected to last. Closing the deal, he said yes, now what? We go to the negotiation phase. What do we give them? What can we offer? We need to revise our school policy and make sure that we are allowed to give or make sure what things we are allowed to give or to accept. For example, for the health office again, what, what did, did we offer them? We offered them the following. They, are going, they were going to get two big signs at the two entrances with their logo. So for every single school event, people are going to see their logo. And their logo is going to be there for life. We might change that later. <laughs> but their logo is going to be there for life. In the United States, buildings are usually named for 10, 20, 30 years, and then they change. The Dominican Republic do not, does not have a culture of giving back. Parents feel that, I already pay for tuition, what do you want? And it's the same thing. And it's the same, it, it, it happens a lot. So in this, the United States, you go to school, and when you graduate, you are already expecting that envelope. It's the culture, and we don't have that culture. We have to build it. That's why we had to go a little further and offer them a sign for life. So what else do we offer? We offer payment terms, interesting payment terms. We offered them a little bit less that we could give in case that they, add, they wanted more time. For example, we are allowed to have them pay for that help sponsorship four years. But I say, you can pay in three. And they go, what about four? Okay. In the beginning, he could have paid in four, but don't say that to them, please. Okay, so what else do we offer them? While you are paying for the sponsorship, they requested to pay on yearly installments. While they are paying, they have the permission to expose their logo on all school events for those four years. So you're going to see their logo for GIN, and they didn't have to pay a dime. For Spring Fest, they can have a big tower in the middle of our field with no cost. So that's good. For our golf tournament, they, have, they can have the exposure they want without paying an additional dime for those three or four years that they are paying. As long, does, in all those cases, they bring their own marketing materials. You yes, never no, have to add, no, no, no. You never add out of pocket costs no. to you. Okay. The, the presence in an event goes to the company. Yeah. They have to come, install, and take it away. We don't pay for that. Yes, How Laura? How are the years chosen by the third How do you get It's a school decision. You, you kind of, it depends on the, for example, on uh, the amount of money. For, that, for the cafeteria was a good amount of money, so we gave more time. But for example, the uh, copy room was a little less, a lot less <coughs> money. So they paid in one year, for example. They decided to pay monthly in one year. But it depends on the, it's a school decision. It's, there's no uh, formula for that. And you guys make the chunk investment ahead of time with a the bank, then separately, and then you're receiving the funds for them, or they're slowly paying to? No, they are paying every every year. Okay. They give us a check. Okay. 
because the room is already there. It's not a room that we are building. Okay. So it's already there. When they pay, we open a CD in the bank that give us interest on that money. And once we are ready for the construction, then we use that money from everything that we have. Collected. Maybe later from you, I can get more info on the financials of course, behind if you need this. Details, yours, of especially course. the CD aspect and all that. Of course, of course. Okay. You personalize the terms for each company. Yes. And what they get. Have you ever had a problem with the companies comparing and like, well, why did they give them this and we didn't get offered that? And you get what I'm saying? Have you ever had the companies compare and then all of a sudden there's a problem because, well, they said we could, you know, pay over four years in their free advertising and we only got two years of free advertising? No, no, because we we have never received any complaints. I was just but, but uh the difference, for example, using that same <laughs> example, the difference if uh for uh advertising were we select while you are paying. Okay. If you select to pay in three years. So then it's thrown back on them, so because they chose three exactly. years. Exactly. Excellent way of putting exactly. it. Exactly. Yeah, because okay. it goes back on their own. Exactly. Yeah. So if you choose three years, you're going to have three years of uh, advertising. Of course, again, it goes with the amount. Yeah. If honestly. you have a lot, a little money, I mean, it's going to be ridiculous to say you're going to pay $20,000 in three years. Yeah. So it goes with the amount of money that you're asking for. So you're building the, the clinic in four years' time? No, the, 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 the health of it's there. Okay. What we are selling now yes. are rooms that are already there. And we invite them to go to the rooms, to the health office. And when they came, they were impressed. They were like, whoa, you have two doctors. And you have, they were pretty impressed. So wait, what is it that they are putting in there? So you guys are financing the doctors yourself? The doctors are employees from school. They're employees school. from yes. your school, okay. Yes. And you had all the equipment? Yes. So what do they? The logo. Money. Oh, just kept, oh. They just give us money and oh, we right. place their logo there. And you can then do whatever you like with that money as, as, as long as it's reinvested in community? We inform that it's going to be used for uh, to fund our construction project because the school still has in, in, in its plan to build a gym. No, specific things. Specific we need to build a gym or athletic facilities because it's not only a gym. And six, a 600 seat uh, theater. Okay. Those are the two major projects that the school is going forward. So they know that money is going to okay. go for so that. Going so there that and then they're just getting the advertising on that room. Mm -hmm. oh. So this is interesting. So this that is actually financing an improvement of another segment of the school. I see because I was coming with the idea because we could use a health service like that. Mm -hmm. uh, and it's interesting because you're using something you had to finance another thing, and now I'm thinking we can use something, another aspect. And exactly. So have you sold any advertisement for this proposed future project, or are you going to wait till it's built? No, we we usually we started selling the cafeteria and the health office before it was built. But we were not very successful on that. People tend to to want to see what they are going to put their money on. And once they see it's a very well uh, built with criteria and, and, and good uh, manufacturing uh, process or procedure, then they go for it. But we were not very successful selling before the build was the building was actually uh, up. Have you ever sold multiple sponsors on a single place? Yes. Like for different levels, yes. like you pay this much and you get a five foot banner and this much you get a two foot banner? We, we did that, but it was a corporation and they used all their brands. It's in the copy room. Okay. You may see it in the hallway of the library. Who, who finances the actual banner? The company the buys No, the banner, the, the, lo the banner, mm -hmm. that's a we built. We, uh, we ordered that, yes. We placed that and it's not expensive. Mm -hmm. But that's the only marketing material you guys buy. Yes, have. yes. The 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 sign. Yeah. We we construct that up on their approval. Yes. In your negotiation, like any type of project, what's the school compromise in front of them? I mean, they're it's clear what they're giving you, but what is the school compromise of to where it goes? Well, the school is basically what. Uh, if I understand your question uh, clear. The school offered them uh, several things, for example, the promotion or the uh, logo or, or uh, presence in our events.
that's what the school offers. But we do not have any compromise. Like we we do not commit. For example, we only see, we only use that type of medication in our health office. We don't have any any any. They do not have any control on how we handle the health office or the doctors or the process. N nothing. No, 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 nothing, no. And in addition to that, would they have like clashes? Let's say you had a sponsorship <coughs> from somebody like Coke. And the other thing, would they object necessarily to like that being contrary to their whole health mission? Well, it might be contrary to your own health mission on it, top of that. We don't have, okay, we don't have uh, Coke in the school, so that's a good question, <laughs> but I don't see it happening because that, that was part of our pitch. And when you go to a donor, it's true, we have to mesmerize them, but we need to be honest. No, I, that, I agree. I'm just we wondering, need to be you avoid those type of conflicts. Yes. If you really no. are saying we are an environmentally friendly school, is that you're not exactly. going to go and no. engage with some oil company to get no, no. That's what I wondered about no. the mission and the, exactly. the values. We wouldn't go for that kind of thing. Okay. Yes. Okay, so just so I, um, I understand very clearly, so you simply use the health office to make that connection with that company in order to get the, the donor for what your project is. Yes. Correct. Yes. Okay. So yes. it's just for the, the, the relationship. Okay. Exactly. Okay. Yes. If I'm having a group of students making a project for the school, are they the ones closing the deal or should another section? For this kind of, of negotiation, uh, usually it's done by the headmaster and okay. myself. We are the people who actually listen. So they told me I have to go faster. Also, you have to have everything in writing. Everything. You make a contract, everything in writing. Emails people, because people tend to forget. And sometimes people get savvy. And they say, no, you said uh, one, but you meant three, and we don't want to go there. And stewardship. This is my last one. Okay. <laughs> um, thanking your donor. As soon as you get that check, bless you, you need to thank the donor. A written note by the headmaster is great. A letter is great. Tell the donor the impact of their donation afterwards. Look what we could build because of you. You were part of this. Pictures of the students using the health office. Look what your money is making. Your money is not actually paying for the medicines that the stu students are getting, but your money is helping us keep on being a great school. Your money is helping us keep on giving our students the best learning opportunities. So they need to feel part of your success. They need to feel part of what you have accomplished. Have you ever had any long-term donors? Let's say like they donate like every year for a term of five, 10 years? Yes, months. we do. We have a donor that pledged uh, the equal amount of uh, high school tuition for as long as his daughter is in the school and she was in pre-K. Nice. <laughs> yes, very happy about that. So, and they're still here, so. <laughs> so we have a long-term donor. I have a question. Um, have you ever had a reaction when you go to some of these places that, um, I, I assume this is a non non-profit organization, yes. a school and everything, yes. but that you are essentially a wealthy school? Mm -hmm. Because I feel that in Panama, when I talk to people about anything my students are doing and everything, everybody's like, oh, that's great. And they're here, so it's like, I, it's hard to say, but like your little rich kids are doing something. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And the idea that I, you're on top of that asking for money, which to so me is like, oh. Yeah, but. Oh, I get that a lot. Okay. And right. how do I reply to that? Yes, our school is expensive, but did you know that, not, and this is not lying, this is true. Did you know that 95% of our budget goes to the operating of the school? Did you know that we hire the best teachers that we can to support our program? And the, the things that we have to offer those teachers to come down here to this island to work are amazing? Did you know that the money that 
money that comes in from tuition is not going to go to buy a car for nobody. It's invested in the school. And did you know that our school is educating the leaders of this world, of this country? And they are going to make a difference. And if we educate young people going through the right path, we are going to make a difference. And with great facilities like the ones we have, like our computer room, where we get very, very, very poor kids from uh, near the school come here twice a week and our high school teach computer classes to them. Do you know how many kids we have taken off the street because now they are interested in, in computers? That's making a difference. So you're basically saying we, we have a multiplier effect. Kind of exactly. For each one of these kids, it's going to be. Exactly. Yes. Um, so going back to four year and three year payment, um, let's say you're asking for the same amount of money to, to, to live in company. Company one has more capability than company two. So company one can pay everything in two years. And company two, with less capability, can pay in four years. But um, you're offering the, the publicity for the, for the years they're going to pay. Mm -hmm. Wouldn't that be better for a company too? That they, they are actually paid for four years, uh, um, that's, even though they have less capability? That's, uh, that's better for that company, but that company usually do not know that we are negotiating with company one. So it's basically who says yes, and that's part of your research. I wish I had two companies that wanted to sponsor me at the same time and I had to decide. Never had that position. But one company does not know the negotiations of, of the other. And for us, it's the same, really. It's the same. How do you make the donors trust that the money they're, they're giving you is going to use accordingly? Well, that's based on confidence and that's based on the reputation of your school. We have a good reputation. We are honest so on your approach. So is the budget of the school going to be, be transferred? Yes, it is. And it's uh, shown before it's approved, it's, it's presented to the parents. And so they, they need to approve it. So they approve the budget? The parents approve the budget, yes. yes. Would you recommend like, for selling our, the projects that we're doing at our school is uh, bringing a team of students? With, like, I would make, for example, the initial contacts with the and then say, I'd like to come and present and bring three of my students to speak with you as well. Or should I make the initial contact and the initial meeting and then have a follow-up meeting? With it depends. It depends on on the on the project. For example, for the building, for the naming project, we usually go uh, the headmaster and me. But for for example, for GIN, it's better to send the students and have them do the pitch. You go with them. For robotics team, it's very for the student to be there, so the donor knows that it's a, a student club thing, and, and so it depends on what project you are uh, looking for. So you have a comprehensive policy on on who gets to ask for what kind of money. So can any club just decide that they're going to raise money, or do they have a list of things they need to do? Or? All money requests have to go through my office. Okay. Because so if they we want to raise money just to build a single fountain, for example, they go to you. And if they want to build a building, they go to you. Yes. Everything goes to you. Yes, yes. Because we don't want to, uh, for small things, we don't want to approach the same donor over and over and that's, over. That's what I'm wondering. Yeah. And, and so I say, for example, for GIN, um, some students got, Bianca, can we contact? No, because they are already donating to robotics, which is the same weekend. Okay. Wow. So I help them say who can they approach and who can't. Like right? to organize it. Yes, yes. Um, okay. and so would you do the same approach with all of this if you're doing like a monetary um, a donor versus uh, like services and supply? As for example, the donors that we're going to be looking for, we're going to be looking for actual supplies because we're holding a conference ourselves as part of our project. So we're going to be looking for a lot of services and supplies. Would you do the same exact approach? Yes, yes. Well, you, you can minimize a little bit, but the basic parts, like who do you contact, you said do the same. The research is minimized because you don't have to go all, you know the company already, you know they have that kind of supply, but you do have to uh, ask for a meeting, maybe you and a student, you do have to thank them. So it's, it's basically, that's why I use like these steps, which are basic, you can use for anything. Okay. 
I think what might be different in your case then is what you exchange for that. Because right. there's uh -huh. less permanence, right? right? right. It's just a one time thing. Yes. Right. You know, kind of like, like the first year, let's see how the conference was the first year, and then sign up maybe for the next two years. Yeah. Exactly. 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 Yes. I have two questions. My first is how, how does this change? Would you say this changes if it's at a for profit school? Uh, and my second would be I'm curious about the relationship with the, co the coffee on campus. But they, they've just been giving us free coffee. Are you paying them? That's or? sponsored. That's a sponsorship, mm -hmm. right? So they're just completely sponsored. I'm curious if you could elaborate on that relationship. Well, what was, oh, well, let me uh, replay the second question. Sure. Then you yeah. Uh, the coffee, for example, when, when the girls were putting together the coffee break uh, for GIN, they showed me this quote from my cater, and I'm like, dude, <laughs> we have a parent that imports fruits. Let's talk to them. Tell him to give you this amount of boxes for free, and then he can charge us two for one for the rest. And coffee, they do that tasting all the time. As long as you let them have their machine with their logo, they're okay. So it's all sponsored. So for the golf tournament, everything that we give to the golfers, it's sponsored. I, we don't buy anything. Yoga, okay, just so I'm clear, you seem like, in your role also, you seem to manage a lot of the information that's necessary for these type of things. Because mm -hmm. your reaction when you say, I know we have a parent, mm -hmm. I feel like it's necessary to have that. If not a full role, which is ideal from what I'm seeing, we have to have some kind of like database or yes. some where we have yes. this knowledge. Yes, it's like, great to know your community. No, definitely. And the parents and where, what they do, are they golfers, uh, what are they co their companies, everything. Have you had uh, students creating an initiative to add permanent facilities to the school? Well, not yet. Not we yet. are planning on that. We are planning on that. It's called the Senior Pledge. Can but we are planning on that. Can students still do like small fundraisers within the school? They like do. Bake sales and they things do. like that? That's a separate not thing, yet. right? That doesn't that's get... just in the community. Yeah, okay. They do. Um, how did your job come to be? Because I'm thinking that we need somebody in our school to manage and organize this sort of information and flow, but I'm trying to figure out how you can sell that. I'm on the same page. Yeah. How I'm just like mesmerized right now. I'm like, oh my God, look at this. Exactly. I could, you know, I could do a piece of it, or you could do a piece yeah. of it, or, but it seems like you need somebody, especially if you're going to be doing big projects to manage everything. How did your job come to be? Did they just recognize that from the beginning that you needed to be there, or did somebody say, hey, well, we need to hire somebody for this? Well, uh, we, have, we are a US-based uh, international school, and most of the school have a development or advancement office. So there's a, a most of them are do, and it just was here. Okay. <laughs> but, right before I was here. But there's a web, uh, a web page called, an organization called case.org. Case, C-A-S-E dot org. They have lots of information about fundraising, everything you can imagine. And they have a summer institute, very interesting. Oh, okay. Very interesting. Case they have org. courses. Case. Case, C-A-S-E dot org. It's an amazing organization. Um, what is the title of your role? Development officer. Development officer. And finally, the last one, people go out there. <laughs> and make it happen. 